Hello, I'm William Douglas, a.k.a. Willie Douglas. is called Yogi on the Run. Salt water up the nose, the petals of a rose are thrown at my feet as I'm walking down the street. But it's all in the mind, I've left the world behind, I'm sat in cloth, eating broth, meditating all the time. J, 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 I'm a yogi on the run. Well, my heart was broke, so I told myself a joke. Then I looked into my eyes and I saw the sun rise. I put my heat on the flare, my feet up in the air. There was no one else there, so it felt a little wise. J, 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 I'm a yogi. On the run. Then I walked into a bar, but I didn't get far before they stopped me on the spot and said, What money have you got? I said, I bring love sent from above, so they sent me back inside with the great almighty shaft. J, 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 I'm a yogi on the run. Then I dropped into a shelter, that's where I felt her But she was cold as ice and I didn't want to melt her Turns out she was a woman, a wonderful human Who took me to a room and tried to set me free G G G I'm a yogi on the run Then my new lady friend said, this is the end. If you can't find some money for me to go and spend. I said, what can I do these days? It's not a sin. She said, not a lot now. Go ahead and begin. J, 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 I'm a yogi on the run. So I took out my flute, I gave a wee toot, and all the passers-by threw some money at my foot. I said, God bless, when I bought my birthday dress, she had a bump in her belly, and she said, you'll never guess. J, 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 I'm a yogi on the run. Now we got so many kids, they're running all around I remember all their names cause I wrote them all down And me and the wife have spent our whole life Sat in cloth, eating broth, meditating in the sun J, 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 I'm a yo J, 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 I'm a yo J, 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 I'm a yo Yeah, the song Yogi on the Run, uh, I remember when I wrote that, it was like, I actually, it was the first time I'd had a bit of a drought. I was, you know, like a a constant writer. I was writing all the time from when I was 20 up until, you know, whatever, till now. But there was a, a gap where I wasn't writing and, I, you know, I stopped for a while, probably the longest gap I'd ever had since I started. Uh, and the first one I wrote at the end of that gap was Yogi on the Run, you know, and I think that's maybe why it's a good one. It's been a good song for me, just that little build up of energy of not writing for a while, uh, came out as the song Yogi. So it's about like, uh, I actually went through a wee phase of like, well, it's ongoing. I've always been interested in yoga, meditation, probably got into it through the Beatles. I went to a place in Leith and the, the guy there was like a, a full-time yogi, you know, like the guy leading the, the class and all that. He was like, so he'd sworn off, you know, he doesn't have a chick, he doesn't do drugs, he doesn't drink or anything, he's vegan he's into chanting, he's all about God and all that kind of thing, and he lived like a monk, at, you know, in the heart of Leith, uh, and I think it was inspired a bit by him, I'd already left, you know, the yoga, that, that guy was off, he actually went up to be quite high up in that order, he's a swami or something now, you know, he's, he's worked his way up, even though he's from the Czech, or he's from Eastern Europe, 
is like a swami in their organization of yoga in India. He's been accepted in and he's quite high up in the thing. But when I met him, he was a monk. So anyway, but this I just found it interesting that he was living the heart of Leith, trying to live this kind of, you know, in the heart of where there's pubs everywhere and all that kind of thing. Not touch drink, not do this and that, you know, just stay in the house, meditate, do yoga and all that kind of stuff. And that was the inspiration jump off point for that song, Yogi on the Run. So it's a bit, I guess the story's a cross between him and me, you know, and, and a potential future that's just imaginary, you know. So it was probably based on that, and I just got a little story idea, like imagining I'm going into the pub and saying I've not got money, I've just got love and teachings and all that, and the way you would be treated. Uh, and I'm eventually finding this chick, and then it turns out she, you know, is a yogi too, and all that kind of thing, and you know, they go on and spend their life in the sun. So that's been a good song for me. I was grateful to get it after a long spell, and it got me back writing again. So I like that one. Yeah, I still love playing it. Uh, I prefer to be versatile. I'd like to write a bit of folk, a bit of reggae, a bit, a bit of everything. Because I listen eclectically. I listen to everything. I'm open to if music's good. I'm interested. You know, I could just as I could write in any form of music. You know, uh, so that's I'm not particularly. I don't want. And it's something that's difficult for me. I guess to put yourself forward. It's like music industry want you to be one thing. You're Americana or you're a this or a that. You know what I mean? You're a pop or a rock or whatever like that. And I just don't agree with it. Most of the people I know listen eclectically. They listen to all kinds of music. If you're into music, you're not just into one style. You you like it all. And I think that'll come out in your writing. And you're really pigeonholing yourself if you are just sticking to that one style. You know, if you love music, do it all. Do what, If you're really doing what you love, you're going to end up doing everything that you listen to. You're not just going to stick to one style, right? The only reason you would stick to one style is fucking to try and make it or something like that. And I just think that's a bargain that's not worth it. You know what I mean? You've got to stay true to your soul and do your thing. And if you can find a way, say so far, you know, I've never made a whole lot of money from music, but I find it quite a rich. I was trying to say it to the taxi driver on the way I was getting the taxi up to the station tonight. He says, oh, my, my son or whatever, or his nephew's learning, listening to Bob Dylan and the Beatles and learning how to write songs. I says, mate, that's what I did. Tell him to stick at it, you know. That's all, all you do, listen to the Beatles and Bob Dylan and things like that. And I says, I make an all right living, you know, I'm comfortable and uh, and I love it, you know, and that's the way to go. And don't compromise yourself in any way. It can still be done, you know, whatever. You could be rich if, you know, if you peg some, you know what I mean, if you go down one certain line, but really who wants to not be themselves? So I've always stuck pretty true to what I like. And if I don't like something, I just don't do it. You know, even where I don't, you know, it's like you go into a, performing pubs and things like that people go up can you play this can you play that as well no no i can't <laughs> someone else will do that i'm not a jukebox i'm here to show you what i like and hopefully you know you like it too uh so that's the way and i stay true to that and it seems to do me good this one's called sunshine sunshine got a hold of my mind Sunshine wanna play all the time Well, I'm feeling alright and I'm gonna stay high Sunshine got a hold of my mind Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah She's so fine Sunshine got a hold of my mind Sunshine wanna play all the time Well, I'm feeling alright and I'm gonna stay high Sunshine got a hold of my mind Oh yeah, oh yeah She's so fine Sunshine wanna play all the time Well, I'm feeling 
alright and I'm gonna stay high. Sunshine got a hold of my mind. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's so fine. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's so Sunshine got a hold of my mind Sunshine wanna play all the time Well, I'm feeling alright and I'm gonna stay high Sunshine got a hold of my mind Oh yeah, oh yeah She's so fine She's so, she's so fine, and I feel so good since I got your love. Yes, I do. It was 2007, I think I wrote that one. A beautiful summer, lots of festivals. I was just rocking up. I had a little stride where like, I'd rock up to a festival to do one gig and they'd ask me to do two or three more you know, and all the little tents around. And uh, we had this thing where, like, if, you know, if I was looking for my crowd, the people who knew me and things like that, I'd shout, whoa! Like, I'm not going to break the mic doing it, but I'd shout it as loud as I could. And then you would just hear back from across the field, whoa! And that's how you find people, you know? Uh, it was beautiful, it was sunny, you know. I met my partner, the mother of my, you know, kids and all that kind of thing, uh, round about that time. And it was just a really beautiful period of time and sunshine had a hold in my mind, yeah. But it's been a good song for me. I sing it right through the winter and it's that, you know, it, it gives me that good feeling every time. It kind of keeps me quite up and it seems to do the same for the rest of the crowd. I did a lot of, like a lot of people, nature walking and things like that, but just basically walking about the woods, ruminating and things like that. And I was looking at my life and how it's gone and my life and how I want it to go. And I was just, you know, having been, you know, maybe half assing it with gigs and all that eventually, because I've been at it, you know, quite a long time. Uh, I just said to myself, you know what, when I go back, I'm going to go 100% gigging. Like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go all out. I'm gonna the top off, sweating, jump into the crowd, karate kicks, fucking jumping off things, on the chairs, off the furniture, whatever. You know what I mean? You only live once. Uh that's what I was going to do, and I have that started to manifest now. Yeah, the last few performances and that with the band and things like that, or whatever band I'm playing with, we tear it up, big, and that's it. It's like everything, hundred percent. Now, this is it. This is the time. That's how I felt. I saw it all when I was walking about in the woods, and uh, and now I do it. You know, there's no, there's no other time. Now is the time. So uh, that was a good thing for me in a sense. It felt like to me like you know a gutty, it felt like being pulled back in a gutty and then fired back out into the world with a lot more velocity this time than I had before. So yeah, I book myself every night. I don't, I can't be bothered with Netflix and all this stuff. I stayed in, I booked myself off for like, uh, to watch the Beatles documentary when it was on. I've got time for things like that. But everything else, no, I've not got time for it. I'm not going to sit in the house. I'm going to be out there doing it, tearing it up, having a live experience, you know, uh, with real people. So I think we're being encouraged to just what, sit in your in your little pods or whatever, you know what I mean? And stay there. Uh, I don't think that's a good future for the world. You know, we've got to keep it live and keep it out there, mixing with people. It's a much better experience and a much better way to spend your life. So, yeah. All right, here's another one. This is called Bonnie Lass. <laughs> Say your name is Jenny. Well, does anybody call you Bonnie Lass? Yo 
Yon river bank looks clean, I mean I've never seen a greener patch of grass. I could fight with you forever, but I've a message to deliver. So won't you help me cross this river, Bonnie Lass? Don't tell me that I'm scared, you can, you're talking to the lead now, Bonnie Lass. It's just a sussy way your look up's got me Shook up like I'm in a different class I could fight with you forever But I've a message to deliver Yes, I do know Won't you help me cross this river Bonnie Lass So wait, last way we best not drown We'll name this town. All right. Woo. All right. Ride. Gotta get to the other side. Ride, Jenny, ride. We gotta get to the other side. Ride, Jenny, ride. We gotta get to the other side. Ride, Jenny, ride. ride. We gotta get to the other side. All right. us paid to take a walk of faith across the glass. I could fight with you forever, but I've a message to deliver. Yes, I do know. Won't you help me cross this river? So Bonnie Lass, that was written about, there's a pub in Lass Wade called the Laird and Dog, and they had a mural in the back that's uh, Jenny Lass Wade. It's like the myth of how Lass Wade came to be called Lass Wade. So it's like this chick puts the Laird, the Laird's got across the river, and she puts him on her back, and he's got a dog with him. That's why it's the Laird and Dog pub. And she carries him across the river, right? She's kind of like peasant girl or something like that, carries the Laird across the river. And uh, I liked it. Something about that I just thought was kind of strange, you know, strange thing to have up in the pub and all that. It's a strange myth. And uh, there was, I played at the open mic there. There's a good open mic down there. Guys, Joe Dick and uh, Malcolm Bathgate run that, Joe and Malky. Uh, and I think I was playing that just before lockdown and an old guy came up to me at the bar. He was about 100 years old. He looked like Yoda or something, right? Big uh, kind of one of these jerseys, you know, the white, what do you call them again? Aaron Jersey, yeah, and he had an Aaron Jersey, and I could barely hear anything. He had no power to his voice. He was just too old. So wah, 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 whispering in my ear, and I couldn't pick up anything he was saying. But he loved the set. I could tell it was all positive about you know what had just been playing. And he said to me like, um, "Put Last Wade on the map." You know, it's one of the things he said. I was like, "Fucking yeah, okay, I'll try." So you know, a few days later or something, I wrote Bonnie Lass about the uh, you know the myth of Last Wade. So that's how that that song came to be. It's about Jenny or Last Wade and how Last Wade got his name. Yeah, when I write songs, there will always be an element of me in the song. Right, it's never just purely imagination. There'll be something that I really relate to or a life experience that pretty much happened or that very close to happened or something I totally understand. 
So it'll be based in reality, but sometimes I bring my imagination into it to take it, you know, to the next level. So what did we mention so far? The yogi on the run, I had, you know, there was a guy I knew who was a yogi and I was a yogi at the time and that's how I got to that. Uh, the But imagination-wise was like the guy meeting the yogi woman in the shelter and all that kind of thing. That's not really true, but it's something I understand. Uh, sunshine was just straight up real. It was the way I felt. It was my state of mind. Uh, what else did we say? The Bonnie Lass and that. Yeah, I was down Lass Wade at the time. And, you know, I actually had some of those experiences that I was writing about in there, but I projected it, you know, into the past. I wanted to be like, I had this idea for a while just before lockdown. It was like, what would Robert Burns do now? You know what I mean? He'd be cutting about on Instagram and things like that. He's in this pub, he's in that pub, he's with this chick and that chick, you know what I mean? He'd be writing all the time, eating good food and all that kind of thing, rocking up to town, going to like high level places, you know, upper class places and all that, mixing with those crowds, doing his poetry. He'd be on the low level in the pubs, just showing up to a pub and rocking it, you know, and then drinking all night and then probably smoking all night, I'd imagine too, and tripping and taking Scottish mushrooms and things like that. So it's like, what would Robert Burns kind of do type thing? And that's where I guess the Bonnie Lass idea came from as well. It was like, it's supposed to be a little bit, you know, modern day Burns or something like that kind of thing. Same idea, the old school poet. So yeah, that, my two favourite poets are Robert Burns and Pablo Neruda. I try and put a bit of that into the work. So the Scottish stuff's probably Burns and the imaginative stuff's maybe like Pablo Neruda. And then the Beatles and Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, Neil Young, all that kind of thing, you know. So at the end of lockdown, I moved to, uh, well, just before it ended, around about April, I guess we were still locked down then, right? I tried to spend, you know, a few nights in the house and all that by myself. And about, the, the you know, the last night, I just, I just wanted to get out, yeah. So and I knew there was cafe around the corner, the walrus and that. So I went round to see what was happening there. And that turned out to be a really good place for me. And I did, we were talking about, you asked me earlier on how many perform. I don't know, I've done, I, I think I've done between... Probably, I don't know, but I'm just going to say 100 to 150 performances. Definitely not less than 100, probably more. Verging towards 200, if you want to add up all the, the, the few times where I jumped up for 20 minute sets at the Walrus and things like that, then, you know, it was a lot. And the, the good thing about that was it meant when things came back, when the gigs came back and all that, and everybody was tentative about getting out and gigging again and nervous and all that kind of thing, I was just like, boom, bang, lightning. You know what I mean? I was hit the ground running. Uh, I soaked up all the gigs, I booked up all myself, you know what I mean? And I got out there as often as possible and I was ready to go. I was on top form, I had new songs, I was uh, I had the fire and I just went for it. Like I say, it was a good thing for me. So the Walrus Cafe was a cool place to go. That was just around the corner from where I live. Uh, and I would be in there a lot. You know, once lockdown was over, I was in, in and out there a lot. We had some cool parties there. It was a really great place. And, and unfortunately, it seems like uh, it wasn't enough. You know, lockdown hit them hard. They, you know, they're struggling now. I think maybe the doors are going to close for good, but it'll spring up somewhere else. But for the moment, it seems like it's going to close down. But I wouldn't call it a failure as, a, as an enterprise. You know, I've, I've had an amazing time. And without that place, I don't think I'd be on the top form that I've been for all these gigs and enjoying it as much. Uh, I got this jacket for Chris from the Walrus and that it was just hanging up there. I was like, mate, can I have a jacket for tonight's gig? I would like my routine when the gigs came back, I would go, so I've had about three coffees, I'm just rapid talking here, yeah? So the, uh, when my routine might be, so around about six o'clock, I'd be like, fuck, I've got a gig, I've got, oh fuck, I've not got strings, I've not got a guitar lead, this and that. So I'd head up to the Walrus, pick up what I needed, get my strings, maybe borrow a capo, guitar lead, whatever I needed for that night. Then maybe Chris would, the guy who uh, runs the walrus and that, would give me a lift up in the van to the gig. We might take a few cats up, you know, from the walrus, take a few people up there. So, like, the place would be, we would have our crowd in there and all that. Say we're going up to, like, the Barony Bar on Broughton Street or that. You'd have a big crowd for the walrus would walk in and kind of take over and all that. And then you would play the gig. You'd have the fur jacket, be sweating, just doing stuff that people don't do at pub gigs and that. Shades, top off, throwing kicks and all that kind of thing, yeah? Just doing it differently than people tend to do on that kind of live scene. Uh, and we had a blast. So anyway, that song, Don't Mess With The Walrus, is based there at that cafe in Leith. And uh, there was one night, this a night in particular, we'd all just had, you know, earlier that day we'd had a barbecue in the park. And this gang, let me start further back. All right, when I moved to the house in Leith, there was one item of clothing there. It was, you know, someone had lived there before me. There was one thing left over. It was a little flat cap. It's funny because I've got the kind of peaky blinders thing here and everybody used to ask about it. 
I've never seen Peaky Blinders. So it had nothing to do with that. There was just a flat cap and I thought, cool, I'll I'll put that on. You know, whatever, it looks cool. I'd never worn one before. I thought this looks all right, actually. And I wandered up to the park. This is before I'd really met anyone. And I saw one guy I knew, he had the flat cap too and all that, oddly enough, this guy Gary. So I was like, cool, mate, how's it going? He introduced me to all the other guys. A few of them had flat caps and stuff too, right? We're all like workies, uh, electricians, things like that. We're all just out in the park, like uh, drinking, yeah, and smoking or whatever. And sunny days, it's starting to be the summer. So we were having a blast. And as time grew on, we all grew to be friends and we would have barbecues in the park and just have a good old time. So one night we've had the barbecue earlier that day and we're all in the walrus having like another meal at night. We're all sitting like a round table, you know, like 12 of us. Got the flat caps on and all that kind of thing. Like I say, I've never seen Peaky Blinders. Uh, anyway, someone popped their head into the shop and says, someone's just stolen a chair from outside. Right, mate Gary's like, no, have they now in that? If I bolted out the door after them. Then the chef, Kev, he bolted after him. And I was like, well, I better go as well. You know, if it's going up, we don't know what we're running into. So I ran after him. Then when I ran, it's like the whole table was whoo, chairs back. And we all ran up the road after. Uh, it was two junkies and one of them had punched the chair. Who knows why, right? What are they going to do? Uh, so Gary grabbed him, put him up against the thing. Never hurt him or anything. Just warned him off and all that. And my mate Stevie ran up, call him St. Stephen. He's a guy who runs me up to gigs, helps me, you know, set up and break stuff down and that. Just a really great guy. He's a wee guy in that though, right? Like, ran up and he was like, uh, Then he fuck with the walrus, right? And I was just, when we all went back down, we got back around the table, you know, because the meal's starting to show up the food. And we're just sitting, we all looked at each other and just like, And then we all, like, someone says, like, Then he fuck with the walrus. And we all just burst out laughing and all that. It was so funny. And I was like, I'm definitely going to write a song about that. So a couple of days later, I went down for a dub in the park, you know, it was a nice sunny day by myself. I was just sitting thinking about any fuck with the walrus and all that kind of thing. And then I was hearing, you know, the I am the walrus tune. So it was like, that's how I started with the third verse. I am he as you are, he as you are me, etc. And I knew I had that. It's like, what rhymes with etc.? Plethora. So have I any more big words? Well, yes, I do. A plethora. And then we mess about then. Don't agitate the walrus. Don't aggravate the walrus. Don't, and I was going to just go through the whole dictionary, but, you know, I don't want the song to be 20 minutes long. So then it was panic, shamanic, and bish, bash, bosh. And then I did the, the first two verses, which are just about the incident and the chair getting stolen and all that. And that's how that song came to be. All right, this one's called Don't Mess With The Walrus. <laughs> One fine night on Easter Road When all the cats were there A punter popped their head in And said to tea leaves chore the chair Don't mess with the walrus Don't mess with the walrus Cause when you mess with the walrus You're only messing with yourself Gary bolted out the door I went to several more behind Grabbed the JK by the JK And then St. Stephen spoke his mind He says, then he fuck with the walrus You don't mess with the walrus Cause when you mess with the walrus You're only messing with yourself with the walrus you're only messing with your man 
mess with the walrus, you're only messing with yourself. Only messing with yourself. Cause when you mess with the walrus, you're only messing with your say